Uh, this video is continuation with part 4 and here we will talk about the large intestine and microbiome. So we see from this slide that the uh, structure of small intestine and large intestine is quite, quite different. Especially that uh, yeah, we have in small intestine we have very uh, high, high surface volume. It is like we have this intestinal villi and uh, but not so no villi in the large intestine Inst instead we have crypts intestinal crypts which are thicker and not much they were not much a uh, surface okay here yeah that's it yeah okay then uh, also we have to consider uh, mucosa mucosa is a layer of uh, mucus and together with some uh, some epithelium layers and this is um, absolutely important very important because again uh, the large intestine is a place where a lot of bacteria develops and protozoa and if these bacteria are not friendly to us if it is pathogenic uh, bacteria they produce a lot of toxins and these toxins get into our blood system into lymphatic system and also I will discuss with it. It, it. it can make a lot of big problems to our health. So we have this large intestine. And uh, here it is again pre presented uh, schematically a structure of this uh, crypt, uh, crypts. And we have the, the, they are not so long, but they also have epithelium layer, single, uh, single cell epithelium layer. And they have uh, blood capillaries and have lymphatic capillar all the same and uh, what is happening in the large intestine uh, first uh, water and some uh, minerals are absorbed from the content of, of the large intestine so we're getting uh, some minerals back and what else is happening again very important and uh, the same like in, in apes but of course in smaller uh, amount we have uh, this different kind of bacteria inside it is estimated the number of the bacteria in the intestine is 10 times more than number of cells in our organism so it, you see and uh, all these bacteria have different genetics so it, if to consider this uh, that uh, our body is a colony of cells, then it is, uh, well, it is not easy to understand who, who is dominating. That the role of microbiome in health and longevity is huge. And if uh, we have to again to uh, think about how to make healthy microbiome, and because bacteria in the large intestine break down any remaining nutrients, so that if anything not digested, not not uh, not uh, absorbed in the small intestine. It gets to large intestine, and then bacteria use it. Okay, but as I said, uh, there are some uh, friendly bacteria and unfriendly bacteria. Uh, unfriendly bacteria they use as food. They use uh, proteins and fat mm, to some extent fat, but mostly proteins. And when they digest proteins, they produce. Uh, first, uh, these toxic gases and, toxi and toxins, uh, uh, which is with ammonia, based on ammonia. And uh, then also, they, uh, because of presence of ammonia, uh, the pH in the large intestine is getting alkaline. alkaline and uh, the peristaltics of the large intestine stops. Peristaltics is uh, improved if it is uh, acidic environment. In the in the gut but if it is alkaline environment then we have constipation constipation and uh, because of this uh, unfriendly bacteria uh, producing ammonia and other toxins which are related to uh, which can be produced from this rotten meat and uh, but friendly bacteria they need also some food mostly they if uh, uh, people if they don't have enough food they consume mucus so, which is not not actually considered not very good, and I personally take care about friendly bacteria and provide them um, better food, so that um, they will be uh, 
not, uh, not damaging mucus, it's protecting away of mucus, but they will produce uh, substances which are like vitamins and short chain fatty acids for which are essential for to keep uh, epithelium layer in the large intestine healthy, but also it can be used as source of energy for liver and for brain. So it is very, very also good idea to keep friendly bacteria and to supply them some food. But okay, we'll talk about this a little bit later in the next part.